Some of you may be a little familiar with a game called Hogwarts Legacy. Of course, part of the Wizarding World, I believe, is the like official umbrella that all the Harry Potter stuff is under now. And this game, which was kind of poised for a while to be a really, really big, good, important game that a lot of people were really going to like, kind of on the level of something like the Arkham games were in the late 2000s and early 2010s, that kind of thing. One of the things that it's known for more than anything else, other than the fact that it seems to just be a really good action game, is the controversy. Well, what is the controversy? Well, specifically, for those that are unaware, the author of the Harry Potter franchise, J.K. Rowling, had basically over the last couple years really been hammering down on this idea that she is very proud about being a TERF, which of course stands for Trans Exclusionary Radical Feminist. Now, of course, TERFs are not real feminists because like it you wouldn't you can't be a feminist and be exclusionary of trans people. Really it comes down to it's the same it's kind of like, you know, a heightened misinjury in a way, because a lot of TERFs are people that just hate men and equate all people that have male genitalia who were, you know, assigned male at birth as men. So they equate all trans women as just men in disguise and all this really crazy shit. So because of this, J.K. Rowling has understandably come un under a ton of fire from more left-leaning liberal people because of her content. I remember seeing years ago, uh, before she went on this like turf tirade, where she would talk about this thing where <laughs> I remember she she did the and we we've talked about this before too, right? She did the whole, uh, you know, race swap thing with Hermione in the, the Cursed Child play. And I remember thinking that was, like, super lame and virtue signaling. And then she would do this thing where she would start writing on Twitter and she would be like, oh, you know, uh, Gandalf, not Gandalf, that's from Lord of the Rings. Uh, I was going to say Ganondorf, but that's not it either. Who, who's the old wizard guy? I only saw the movies, like, once and, and, and never again. Not because I dislike them, and we'll get into that in a minute. Uh, I can't remember. The guy that, like, places the hat on Harry's head. The guy that, like, his actor's dead now. Rest in peace. But I can't remember... Dumbledore! Dumbledore. So, um, she did this, like, thing where she was like, oh, you know, uh, Dumbledore's actually gay and all this stuff. And people were like, oh, so, so, so progressive and all this stuff, right? And, and then she comes out and she's like, yeah, no, I just, I, I just hate trans women. Like, like she, her, she's really hammered down on this thing for the past couple of years where she just vehemently hates uh, trans women. And she's, like, just completely loud and proud about being a turf. She's like, yeah, I'm a turf. That's what I am. Like, proud of it. You know, all these different things. She's very much palling around with very, like, very conservative, um, you know, genocidal people toward um, trans trans people and all these different things and it's just it's it's a very sad thing i'm sure for people who are fans of the wizarding world of harry potter in general to see this see this like experience this and everything but more than just like all of this craziness that's happened i remember talking with a buddy of mine not a not a buddy of mine my brother <laughs> talked with my brother uh who is trans about this and he was a huge fan of Harry Potter for years. And he told me one day, he was like, yeah, I just kind of, you know, gave up on Harry Potter. And one of the reasons for that was because of uh, JK, you know, J.K. Rowling, to which I had told him. And I said, you know, if, if for you, it's something that you've outgrown, you're just not interested in it anymore or anything like that, or you do want to, like, you know, kind of take this stance that you, you don't want to partake in this thing that was created by a person who is now extremely hateful and more than just problematic but actually hateful i completely understand and support that but at the same time if if you don't want to do that if you want to be able to hold on to like the memories and the importance that the fictional world of harry potter means to you 
by all means, do that as well. But at the end of the day, obviously, the choice needs to be yours. And if you're watching this, I hope that you still understand that I believe that. Um, but, you know, in any case, <clears throat> so more than just the game itself, the controversy surrounding the game is what has really kind of propelled the discussion, the discourse of this into the stratosphere. And essentially what has, what has come of all of this is we've had these people on the left, these, let's be honest, woke scolds, but like, you know, super, uh, you know, leftist, uh, whatever you want to call it, progressive people that aren't really that progressive, um, that were going on this tirade about how basically, oh, if you think, if, if you buy this game, then you're transphobic, if you do this, if you did it, it whatever, right? And to be clear, there were absolutely people who were transphobic that were saying things like, oh, I'm going to buy five of these to really support J.K. Rowling. There were people that absolutely did that. But what we as a movement, as a leftist progressive movement did in this instance, and we, this is one of the reasons we keep losing so much, is we ceded all discourse of this really popular game from a very popular franchise to the right. Most people that play video games, consume media, live in the world in general, are normies, are people who really don't pay that much attention to politics. So when you have people, some of which are huge fans of Harry Potter, some of which might even be trans and not, I mean, generally speaking, if you are more marginalized, especially if you're trans or something, you're going to be more tuned in on politics because you kind of have to right now. Um, but a lot of people don't even know what J.K. Rowling thinks about these things and, you know, all these different things, right? And a lot of people are supportive of trans people in general, uh, like myself, who I never really cared that much for Harry Potter and the whole franchise, like, in general. So for me, I, I've, um, I think I talked about this before, I grew up, uh, Christian. I grew up like religious. And my dad was very much in the camp, specifically Catholic. And my dad was very much in the camp of, uh, especially when I was Catholic, but e even past, e past that. But anyway, very much in the idea that like, oh, you can't, this is wizardry. This is like, da -da -da, you can't watch this to the point where I was in school at one point, And I think it was actually in like the Catholic preschool he sent me to. And we were watching the first movie of Harry Potter. Might have been a bit older, I can't remember exactly, but we were watching the first movie of Harry Potter, and he came in and picked me up from, like, after school or whatever it was. And he, like, yeah, <laughs> when he saw what the movie was that we were watching, like, yanked me out of it. He was like, oh, I can't believe they had you watching that. Like, these different things, it's so evil. And so, for years, I just kind of missed out on the Harry Potter craze, as it were. You know, I was, I was born in 97. I actually had the same birth date as Harry Potter, by the way, July 31st. Uh, so you know, take that as you will. A, a lot of Potter heads, they're called. A lot of huge Harry Potter fans really liked that when I would tell them that. But anyway, um, look, I, I, again, so yeah, I, I was born in 97. I grew up throughout the 2000s and I saw and lived through a decent amount of the Harry Potter craze. Two of the big things that I was not allowed to associate with because of, uh, what my dad considered like, oh, you like, this is witchcraft. This is evil. Three things actually were Harry Potter, Pokemon, and Yu-Gi-Oh. Three things that I like, I wasn't like super into anyway. I might've been, had I been allowed to, you know, experience those, but my, um, like my peers and everyone around me were super into that stuff. And I just wasn't. It wasn't until the ABC Family Marathon leading up to the uh, Harry Potter Deathly Hallows movie, the first one, came out that they, ABC Family did a, a marathon of all the movies, and uh, my mom and I recorded them all on DVR, and we watched, we watched them on my dad's back. Uh, it was bad. Um, they're, they're, they're divorced now. <laughs> There's many reasons why. That, it's not like that was it, but like they didn't 
see eye to eye on a lot of different things and get along well. And anyway, it was they're much better off now. <laughs> um, anyway, and so I I watched the movies through that right, and I watched all of them except the two that didn't record properly were the second one, which I think is called. I don't remember what it's called off the top of my head. I don't really care. But I know it starts with like an owl flying into the building or something, flying into like Harry's room, and it like cut off like while he was writing a letter or something, whatever. Um, so I, um, it was that one. I, I watched that one. I, I didn't watch that one, rather. And it was The Half Blood Prince. Those were the two that I didn't see because the DVR didn't catch them. And even while I was watching these, I mean, I liked them. You know, I enjoyed watching them, but I like them to the extent that I like most movies and entertainment where it was kind of like, yeah, okay, this is cool, but it's not like the best thing ever. You know what I mean? I didn't get enthralled and super into these series as like I did say the Sonic franchise or Spider-Man or something like that. Right. So it, it wasn't like a big deal to me, but as I went through middle school, uh, which was where I like saw this stuff. And then when I got into high school and I made some friends who were, super into harry potter i mean like like i one person one of my friends asked me one time what my house was and i said oh i know i've taken like different tests and you know sometimes i've gotten it's those online personality tests love that shit by the way but she was like oh what is your house and i was like i don't know i've it, it's been like um i've sometimes i've gotten gryffindor sometimes i've gotten hufflepuff you know and she was like well you need to take the official test and i'm like I did. It's like one of those BuzzFeed things, right? She's like, no, no, the official test on Pottermore.com. I'm like, I don't know. And she like sends me a link. She says, you got to take it now. I'm like, all right, chill. You know, so like, all right, all right, chill. Um, anyway, and so I got uh, Hufflepuff. But, but again, I took it again and I got Gryffindor. So it's like, again, I'm still, I'm very much like back and forth between the two. So in any case, um, I... Um, you know, I I was relatively familiar with the franchise, followed it to an extent, was interested in it enough, you know, different things. But more so, I kind of consumed it, as it were, through cultural osmosis, right? And with all of that said, I'm not super into the franchise. So I can't relate to this in the way when I talked about, like, the Spider-Man fan film that is getting super like you know people were, were were trying to cancel it because the creator did a lot of really shitty stuff especially racist stuff and how i was able to say like i i can't like i i, I love this so much i i can't like not watch this fan film when it comes out because of that you know um nor is it to the level and it doesn't hurt me either to the level of like finding out and coming to terms with all the shit that uh, uh, Drake Bell did, you know, where I have to, like, see my hero, my childhood hero in a different light. It doesn't affect me in those kind of ways, this whole Harry Potter thing. But for a lot of people, it does. For a lot of people, this is their childhood. And for a lot of people, this is... This game is something that they were very much looking forward to. And I don't think it's fair to be someone who's more progressive. Uh, and, and I'm using quotes around that because I don't think the stance is actually progressive at all. To basically villainize other people for doing things like streaming the game on Twitch. Uh, you know, harassing people and different things like that. Now, it is true. That a lot of people, people like Vosh and Zan have covered this, that there is a grift happening as well, where a lot of people have taken this to be like, oh, I've, I've been doxxed, I've been attacked, all because I played this game. And in actuality, they just had some people kind of show up in their chat and say some bullshit. But they weren't like attacked as much. And don't get me wrong, the right loves this shit. They love to, to run with this and be like, oh, look, the left is eating their own and, and look at these you know, leftists trying to cancel people for playing a game. Meanwhile, uh, current day, they are trying to cancel Hershey's because there's a trans woman not even, 
like in the forefront of a ad, but in the background, it whole whole another thing, whole another thing. Anyway, I give this whole preamble to give the context of kind of where I'm coming from with this as we move into this more specifically. And with all of that in mind, I want to get into an actual discussion of Hogwarts legacy. By the way, everyone, my name is Christian Verstappen, and I have a lot to say about many things. Uh, I realize it is super late into the video to be properly introducing myself, but fuck it. Anyway, here we go. So, this is the way that a lot of normies, a lot of people who aren't even familiar with this stuff, see the whole controversy. We had this guy go on TikTok. I don't know this guy's name. I don't really care. Uh, but he had this to say. And we'll see the response as well. Please do not support the upcoming Hogwarts Legacy game. But why? Please, do not stream it. Don't make YouTube videos about it. Don't buy it. And don't bloody pre-order it. Um, the reason being is that you may not be aware that by supporting this title, you are essentially aligning yourself with some really heinous transphobic values. The, the, by the way, this video is by a guy called uh, West Side Live, which I definitely wouldn't consider him conservative. I would consider him apolitical. But as we know, a lot of people who are apolitical tend to lean a bit more right because we do shit like this on the left. J.K. Rowling, a.k.a. Joanne, has... By the way, I just want to... Rolling. One thing I will say is I really hate the performative um, people like, oh, I'm going to mispronounce her name and like it doesn't matter because she hates trans people or the um, let's pretend Harry Potter was never good in the first place just because we don't like J.K. Rowling now. It's like, just chill, you know, like pronounce her name properly and fucking don't act like this whole franchise was always bad just because the creator is bad. You know what I mean? Made it extremely clear that they see the success of this title as being vindication of their transphobic views. That, you know, by this title doing well, that means that they were correct. And honestly, you just have to look on Steam forums to see the kind of people that are cheering for this game. Please don't be among them. Please touch some grass. Okay, go outside. No, for real, for real, for real, honestly, authentically, please, people, go outside and get some sun. Please go outside, sit down, breathe it in. When you realize there's a whole world out there, touch some grass, get off the internet. If this is what y'all have reached to, stay off the internet, touch some grass. See, this is how normies see the thing. And I will say, with the guy that, that was saying all that, Okay, just real quick, I want to explain my stance on the matter. Just with anything else, if you don't want to support something, you yourself personally, you don't have to. But you don't need to vilify other people just because you yourself don't want to support something. I realize Chick-fil-A has some really horrible, um, you know, things that they do. They were actually funding um, conversion, uh, yeah, conversion camps and, and stuff like that for a while conversion therapy uh, stuff. And that's awful. But I'm sorry, that's not going to prevent me from if someone wants to, if a friend of mine wants to like go to Chick-fil-A or uh, I buy Chick-fil-A sauce at the store, like I have a thing of Chick-fil-A sauce sitting in my fridge right now. You know, I, I may not agree with them as people, but like, sorry, companies do horrible things all the time. Coca-Cola funds uh latin death squads you know um i love oreos and nabisco and all that stuff and they get their chocolate through child slavery in other countries you know all these different things they all do really horrible things but i've talked about this before about separating the product from the uh producer because i think you have to 
I pissed off a lot of bots and shite people yesterday. Might do a greatest hits in some comments. Either way, it's a rain world time. Just sit happy knowing these people will be thought of in much the same way as segregationalists from the 50s are now thought of. Please. Please. Touch. Some grass. Talk to a person. That's not in your bubble. Talk to people. Get some fresh air. Are you dead ass right now? Are y'all- have y'all become this brain dead? What's so funny is JK Rowling has nothing to do with this game. And got nothing to do with her. You ain't gonna buy a video game because of- But she does get royalties. That's the argument that people were making. Is that, well, you're like implicitly supporting her because she makes money off of this and yada yada yada. And like, I, I get it. I disagree. But I get it. And again, this is how- other people see it. This is how the people who are not aware of this shit, this is how the normies see this stuff. The opinions of one woman. That's her opinion. If she's wrong, okay, cool, she's wrong. What do you wanna do now? Any support of the Harry Potter franchise current projects while JK Rowling is in charge of it and using her ongoing platform to target those who justify her continued targeting of trans people is hurtful to trans people. Not begrudge anyone that love their past works of things they've already owned that they take comfort in. I own the first nine movies and all seven books myself, but any support of something like Hogwarts Legacy is hurtful. So you mean the thing that she actually Wait, I thought... I know the last movie was turned into a two-parter. But she said seven books and nine movies. Wouldn't there only be eight movies? If there's... No, there should be... Yeah, there should be eight movies. If there, was another movie turned into a two-parter? I know Deathly Hollows was. Huh. I remember it was a big deal at the time, too. I remember seeing it in theater. That was the thing. I saw Deathly Hollows Part 1 and Part 2 in theaters with my mom. And, um... It was like this, it ended on a cliffhanger, and it was like, holy shit, what's going to happen? Like, I think Voldemort, like, got the wand or something out of a crypt or something, and he, like, held it up, and, like, the sky was all dark, and then it ended, and it was like, Deathly Hallows Part 1. And then it's like, to be continued in Part 2, and I'm like, holy shit, I I've never seen this in, like, a movie before, this is wild, so, yeah. And now everybody does it, and, like, The Hobbit, which didn't, which was, like, the shortest book in Lord of the Rings series got turned into a two-parter and didn't didn't need to anyway we participated in can't throw those out but something because it has an attachment and franchise name which is way bigger than jk rowling at this point you can't buy that even though she's a multi-millionaire it really doesn't matter to her whatsoever at this point who cares she has been very open about the fact that she views support of her her products and and hogwarts stuff you know all the harry potter stuff as like in support for her and support for her transphobic views and she has said that she does use the money in general that she has to fund transphobic causes which is both of those things are true but it's also true that your your boycott is not going to make a dent in her effectiveness and i see no reason why to do something that is ineffective politically or otherwise just to virtue signal because that's what this is all about is is purity testing touch and this is the reaction people have normies have this is the kind of shit that pushes people to the right because the right looks at them and say yeah they're fucking crazy aren't they yeah well uh we're okay with the game we're okay with jk rowling uh, and then normies are like oh really oh yeah, why don't you come over here? We won't judge you. Yeah, exactly. Grass. I love Harry Potter in this world. I don't give a fuck about the author. I don't know. I don't follow her on the drama. Politics aside, I'll be enjoying the game that I pre-ordered because of his residing within the Harry Potter fantasy world that saves me when I was a kid going through dark times. Yeah, sure. If, and if that's how you feel, that's perfectly fine. If you, again, if you personally want to say, I don't want to participate in this because it, it is against my values or whatever, like, fine, that's cool. That's great, whatever. But, like, we laugh when conservatives do it. Why is it okay when we do it it's not i think it's it's cringe it's stupid uh consumer activism is fucking dumb and we only do it because it's like one of the few ways we think that we can actually do activism in this fucking late stage capitalism hellscape we find ourselves in fine take grass on your donation to actively harming trans people oh oh and the funny thing with this too kind of like a lot of people that speak on the behalf of people of color You'll find a lot of these people are um, allies who are speaking on the behalf of trans people as well. 
Touch grass! I mean this with every fiber of my being. Fuck you if you buy Hogwarts Legacy. Touch grass! I promise y'all I don't live in the real world as y'all. I've become so disconnected with the internet lately to where I'm just like, there is no way that these people exist. Whenever I just go into reality, I realize, oh wait, this is the real world and this is the internet. Some of y'all need to get off the internet. Touch grass! Touch some grass! There's a beautiful world. The birds sing every morning. The sun comes up every day. And people are in it and go to their actual jobs, actual workplaces. Talk to actual people. Like, honestly, when it comes to this stuff, aren't y'all tired? Aren't y'all tired? Aren't y'all tired of being angry? Aren't you, aren't you, aren't, aren't y'all exhausted? Is it not exhausted? You even got people that are mad at Mr. Beast. Yeah, you do, yeah, this is a whole nother, oh my god, okay. Yeah, this is a whole nother thing about, like, okay, to some of this drama, people were mad because, <sighs> okay, basically, the super wealthy YouTuber, Mr. Beast, gave a bunch of people, a hundred, I think, a thousand, whatever, uh, people who are blind that could receive a very simple, speaking in uh, medical surgical uh, terms, uh, you know, comparatively, I mean, uh, a very simple surgery in which they could, they would be able to see uh, after the fact. And there were people like Hassan who got rightfully angry about the fact that it it's shitty that he should even have to do this. Like that these people are not already getting this treatment for free. But a lot of people also got mad and they're just like, oh, this is like, uh, what is it called? Um, uh, inspiration porn and shit like that. And yeah, it kind of is. And it does suck. But Mr. Beast even talked about how he... He thinks it's shitty that he, he should have had to be someone to do this and that the healthcare system doesn't already support people who could need this surgery and that someone like him shouldn't have to step in to do this kind of thing. So the, uh, the discourse became really dumb about that. But yeah, of course, some people were disingenuous about the whole thing as they are with uh, many different things. And I don't think Westside is being disingenuous here. I think he's. Again, when we push people away, he's, 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 I believe he is apolitical, but he, um, he's going to lean further right because people who are apolitical tend to do that, especially when we do such a good job pushing them into the arms of the, uh, you know, the right. Literally helping blind people. Oh, and another one, uh, and it's funny because he showed that, uh, Jesse, <laughs> Jesse Gender tweet earlier. So, um, <laughs> another thing, uh, the, the, oh man, I don't even. No, that's a whole other thing. If I want to talk about, bit, uh, okay, no, I, I'll I'll get into it real quick. Basically, there was this thing where uh, just Jesse had tweeted about this whole like, oh, we shouldn't be like, okay. <sighs> I think this needs a a, well. No. You know what? Actually, no. Um, yeah, it's going to get its own video. But, but to get into the you know, specifics of it real quickly, there was a trans woman in the UK who was murdered by the name of uh, Brianna J, spelled G-H-A-Y. People took with the hashtag that was used previously for Brianna Taylor and other people, as it has in the past, of hashtag say her name. The uh, memorial service even was using the say her name for Brianna J. And there were people that stepped in and said, I don't think, and they were white people, of course, that came up and said, I don't think that we as white people should be using the say her name thing for Brianna J when this is meant to be, this is meant to be for black women who are, you know, victims of police violence. And no, that's not even what, like, no, it's about marginalized people that society overlooks and acknowledging them and say her name. It was originally used for uh, Native American women who have, or, and girls who were taken away and, and, and it, it's to draw awareness and attention and like it's just it, and it's it, between that and, and this Harry Potter business and all these different things it's like are these really the fights we need to be having like seriously? Is this really is this really that important? No. 
But when we fight about these things, or the Mr. Beast thing, all it does is, again, push those people to the right. Those possible would-be allies, it pushes them to the right. People for funding to cure blind people, and people were mad about that. Aren't y'all tired? Imagine this is what we came to in society. Aren't y'all tired? Aren't y'all just one day y'all wake? Wait. Mad about that. Aren't y'all tired? Imagine this is what we came to in society. Aren't y'all tired? Aren't y'all just one day y'all wake up and y'all they're like, huh? This shit kind of makes me sad. I'm just kind of tired of complaining all day about whatever I'm complaining about. Aren't y'all tired of being tired? Aren't y'all tired of being mad yet? Y'all tired? I'm tired. I'm tired of looking at y'all. <laughs> I'm tired of looking at y'all. That's why I'm tired. I'm tired, dog. I'm tired. Anyways, fuck yeah, I'm pre-ordering this game. I can't wait. <laughs> Jesus. This is a. Oh, we'll get to this later. This is actually really cool. So. One of the uh, funniest and uh, most creative and just. Well, well, this is a really well done video by uh, Video Game Donkey about Harry Potter and the Forbidden Game, and I, I really love this shit right here. Here I am with the new game Harry Potter Legacy. Sorry about that, everybody. I did not know about the whole situation behind that game, so instead, we're going to be playing the new Rick and Morty game. I feel like I need to apologize again. I did not know that the dude who makes that game was a sexual weirdo, so instead, we're going to be playing Overwatch 2. Okay, apparently, the team behind Overwatch was doing some really messed up stuff behind the scenes, so... Okay, apparently, the team behind Assassin's Creed was doing some really messed up stuff. Okay, apparently, the director on that game was fired for unspeakable the act so we're doing dead space i did not know that ea was funding a blood diamond mining operation i am now trending on twitter people are calling me more evil than voldemort so instead we're going to be playing sonic fans are now attempting to so i thought that his issue with that one was going to because all of these are you know obviously you probably get the joke by this point it's about the the controversies and basically this idea that look all of the creators of these games have done some bad shit. Like, there's always bad, you know, bad things associated with creators of different products and such. It's just how things are. But as a Sonic fan, I thought he was going to bring up the fact that Yuji Naka, the creator of Sonic the Hedgehog, was actually arrested recently for some kind of like embezzlement or something if i remember and uh that's not where he went with this but yeah again something where like yeah the creator of of you know my favorite fictional character sonic the hedgehog was you know a terrible boss and stuff too but that's not going to prevent me from loving the franchise and and supporting it and everything you know Sue me for defamation. I don't think that's how it works, but just to be safe, we're going to be playing Last of Us Part 2 instead. Gamers, I made a big mistake. I'm getting in a lot of trouble today. I did not realize Last of Us 2 was a woke type game. So One of the things, by the way, that um, so Hassan was talking about playing the Hogwarts Legacy game, which I, I think he should have. I think a lot of people. Uh, on, on the left should have if they wanted to talk about that because they could have used that as a vehicle to talk about uh, important issues and trans issues and be very trans affirming and dunk on JK Rowling the entire time that they were talking about this game but you know Hassan even said he didn't want to deal with the hate so he just didn't bother with it at all and because of this the people that no, how do I want to phrase this? Uh, one, okay, one of the things that uh, Jesse Gender said in her video, uh, and, and this is no like hate toward you know Jesse or anything like that. I I like most of the stuff that she talks about uh, from what I've seen of her work, uh, her content on YouTube and everything. I've subscribed to her and all that, but I don't. Uh, I, I vehemently disagree with her like purity testing and and this stuff when it comes to the Hogwarts legacy or her take with the. Brianna J, say her name. They tried uh, changing it to Justice for Brianna, and it's like, okay, cool. So you took like a movement, and anyway, whatever. It's the whole, it's the whole thing. Um, anyway, so she, she made a video where one of the things she talked about was, you know, if you, she said basically we don't, kept saying we don't fight the rules of the oppressed, we don't fight the oppressors with the tools that 
they use when no that's exactly what you do you fight fire with fire you have to um beat them at their own game you know um like for one that's exactly what you do and for another you follow what's popular at the time and use that as a vehicle for your own things you want to talk about and you know all that stuff you don't because she was saying oh you could play celeste which was made by a trans person or you could by the way celeste is a great game or you could play this game or that game da, 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 da. that's not where the conversation was like yeah someone like hassan could have um still brought a big audience because he was playing that game but he wouldn't he would have brought in an audience because he's hassan not because he was playing a popular game that people who don't even know him for uh who people don't even know him would watch and instead they're going to be watching all these people who are not going to be talking on trans issues and it's just it completely completely missed the point uh with with jesse's entire take on the whole concept and uh, it was just it's it's mind-boggling to me instead we're playing the most oh and, and and what made me think of that was another one was where uh donkey was just doing last of us part two and she was saying oh you could do last of us part two which is going to be really big because the um what do you call it the the hbo show just came out and that's super popular and it's like yeah but this isn't the same thing and i don't know if you don't realize that but it's just it's just not Woken game, Sleeping Dogs. I did not know that Square Enix had retroactively added NFTs to that game. So instead we're playing WWE 2K22. That was a fucking disaster. Apparently Hulk Hogan has been saying crazy shit. I don't want any kind of evil energy on this video. So we're going back to the classic Smackdown vs. Raw 2004. This is a different, non-controversial game with no... So today we're going to be playing Fortnite where I'm going to be using the Will Smith skin. I just now found out about the Will Smith situation so instead we're going to be playing I just don't like Valorant so instead I'm playing uh, Bad Boys 2. I'm sorry to all my fans that were upset about the previous game. I forgot that Bad Boys 2 also had Will Smith in it. So instead we're going to be playing the Shark Tale even though it wasn't Will Smith who voiced him in the video game. I feel like just out of respect to the families I shouldn't play that game that was a bad call. We're playing Gex. This game is rated E. It's a classic game. Everybody here loves Gex. This is the only game I trust. Ah, ancient Chinese level. I'm Tom Vu. You can be a millionaire. Dr. Jones, you will never get all three chakra stones. With a level six, you get aggro. Today, we're going to be playing Spider-Man 2. Yeah, love it. Oh, absolutely love it. A amazing. Amazing. You know, I will, um, I'll direct you back as well to the college humor, everything is problematic, or the social consequences of everything. Uh, I love it. Uh, it entirely, this is eight years ago, and it entirely encapsulates this entire uh, concept. I'm not going to watch the whole video now. I've talked about it before. Uh, yeah, but in any case, yeah, it's like everything that you do, there are going to be things either inherent like to it, or there are going to be things within it that are problematic. What was this one? Ah, oh, yes. Here's another uh, great take by uh, Mighty Keefe. I am Mighty Keith. Hey there, just here to pick up my copy of Hogwarts Legacy. Yeah, no problem. Let me go ahead and see if we got some in the back. Hey, Jimmy! Jimmy, we still got some of that trans role propaganda. Hey, what, what, what you talking about that? Wizard Day? Yeah, a franchise where if you like it, you're harboring hatred and you're calling for the extermination of trans people. You, like, do you actually believe that? Shit, nigga, I got a fifth grade reading level. Of course I do. Here's your game. Okay, I really like this artwork in the back. I'm sorry, I have hey, to turn that out real quick. You actually like it. Your heart is in the back. Hey, Jimmy! I really like this. This is I like how it's like different pieces, like different panels that like they're together, but they're not 
you know what I mean? They're not, they're not like actually together. They're just kind of, I, I, I don't know. I like it. I don't know what that's called, but I like that a lot. Anyway. Of course I do. Here's your game, buddy. <laughs> and it looks like you already paid with your blood money online. So uh, you're good to go. Uh, thanks. Have a great day. You have a great day as well, evil person who hates marginalized people. What? I, what? Sir, I'm black. Why are you supporting hatred with the LGBTQIA plus community? How did we get here so fast? The game's the gun, and you're the bullet. The bullet's the game, and you're, the bullet's in the gun. The, you're the gun, and the, the bullet is the game. Sorry, you're, yeah, so you're the gun, and the bullet is the game, and you're, ca you're causing a murder. You buying this game means you directly and definitively agree with all of the positions that J.K. Rowling has on the trans community. Bro, what the hell? I never thought I'd share her views. I'm just trying to play a game. <laughs> I don't even know what she's doing unless someone else brings her up. Okay, but you still bought the game. You're supporting her financially. I bought the game because it's Harry Potter. I grew up in Harry Potter, just like I'm sure everyone else my age. I don't understand what, what, what's going on. Isn't Harry Potter just bigger than J.K. Rowling at this point? No. Nah, sorry, buddy. You're supporting a billionaire transpho. Twitter will be hearing about this. Wait, what? You're using Twitter? What? Isn't it owned by... By billionaire transpho? Hasn't he tweeted many times, ridiculing the ideas of pronouns and all the other verbiage that trans people would consider problematic? True. Um, yeah. Elon Musk is pretty out and out about being just, like, further right every day, it seems, at this point. Pay for Twitter? Doesn't matter if you're paying for it. You're still using it. You're still aiding in the population growth and engagement on his website. And he said plenty of times he uses those numbers to justify his purchase. And those are the same numbers that are used for advertisers to bring money to his platform. Whatever, whatever. It doesn't matter anymore. It doesn't matter. Well, why are you so fixated on this game? It's funny, because that's actually my question as well. Why are you so fixated on this game? Out of all the revenue streams this woman has, why do you care so much about this one in particular? Explain yourself. When's the last time you stood outside Universal Studios and boycotted ticket sales? You know she gets a percentage out of every Universal ticket sold? How many times have you been out there boycotting that? What about Legos? You know how much money she makes every year from toy sales? You're a bad person, and uh, Twitter told me that, so I'm going with it. It just seems so odd to me that out of every avenue she gets money from, you decide to go after this Warner Brothers video game that she's not even involved with. But I think I know why. Because it's easier. You get to get out of bed, pajamas on, go right onto your keyboard, and type in Harry Potter game bad. Therefore, I'm a good person. At some point, these movements always get hijacked by disingenuous individuals trying to look like the good guy for some type of purpose or validation. It's much harder work to get off your ass and go- True. And in this case, they got hijacked as is often the taste with this kind of bullshit boycott stuff by um the right who who loved who instead said you know oh you're not a bad person for just wanting to play a game you know just it, it it's okay and it is okay by the way right but they're oh look at those meanies they're they're they're, they're being so mean to you. you're not a bad person just just come on like you know just uh we'll let you play this game over on our side Go down there to Orlando or California and boycott Universal or Legos or go to Japan and boycott Nintendo because guess what? Oh, and by the way, just real quick, um, I have not, no problem either with people going to, uh, you know, Wizarding World of Harry Potter at Universal or, or the, the Legos or any of the other stuff he's talking about here. I think in general, like I said, consumer activism is cringe and uh, fuck off. <laughs> But she has contracts with them too. The humongous parts of her income, y'all just overlook. The ones that could potentially actually make real change, you just overlook. Oh. Because it's easier to attack this game. Now I'm hearing people are bullying innocent streamers just because they're playing this game? That is true. There was a website called... Is I don't know if it was called this, but it, it, was, it was to see if somebody was streaming it and you could like just search their name on Twitter and find out if, say, like... Hassan or Xander Hall or Vosh or someone was, was streaming the game. I think Zan actually will stream it at some point. He's been pretty open about the fact that he's going to acquire it through other means where he's not financially supporting uh, J.K. Rowling through it, but uh, even still. Yeah, it's fucked up, because the whole concept was that you could search and see who was streaming it, and then you could go and harass them about it. You could go and bully them and shit, and it's, yeah, it's fucked. You've become exactly what you hate. A monster. For the most part, the people getting Hogwarts Legacy, it doesn't mean anything to them, except they just like Harry Potter. They're not sharing any views with anyone. Alienating people with baseless labels serves no purpose. All it does is continue to divide everyone. I hope someday you can understand that. In the meantime, I'm going to be in Hogwarts, bitch. Or that's just crazy. Yeah. Yeah. 100%. And now we have... I've talked about these guys before, but um, we're going to have... One of my favorite um, Let's Play channels, video game coverage people, Hellfire Commentaries. I've talked about them before. I've been following them since 
2008, 2009. They're what got me into YouTube in the first place. This is their take as they begin their playthrough of Hogwarts Legacy. Hello everyone, I'm Edtop64. And I'm Tanner of the North. And welcome to the Hellfire Comms playthrough of Hogwarts Legacy. I have been looking forward to this game for so long that when I first saw it, not only did it not have an official title, there wasn't even any official footage. It was all blurry, it was obviously a leak of some kind, don't know like who leaked it, where it came from or whatever, but for all we know, this was the game we had been waiting for for years. The, the chance to just like explore Hogwarts, cast spells, hither and thither, and just basically have your own adventure in the Harry Potter world. No longer were we confined to Harry himself with Hermione and Ron, the useless so, Weasley. So you can hear even the way that he's talking about this. Clearly this is somebody who grew up with the franchise, loved the franchise, was really looking forward to this type of game. And, you know, he's not like Tom actually, and, and Tom here, he actually is a pretty, uh, pretty left leaning liberal person. I remember when they did their playthrough of Detroit Become Human, made some pretty, uh, pretty based comments uh, throughout that playthrough. No, indeed, we would be the hero of the story. But then it went dark, and we didn't really hear anything about it. Flash forward to a certain PS5 event, and boom. Full reveal, the title is called Hogwarts Legacy. It's set before any other books, any other movies. Well, same thing, really. And uh, yeah, we are the hero of this story. And honestly, I'm so excited. I can't wait to start playing this with Tanner. But before we actually get into the game itself, just want to stop for a second and discuss something uh, a wee bit important. So I'm going to hand over to Tanner here, and he will explain the fineries. But if you want to get straight into the game, you can check out the pinned comment below. That timestamp will send you directly into the start of the playthrough. Take it away, mate. Yeah, so obviously, unless you've been living under a rock, you probably know about uh, some of the author of Harry Potter, J.K. Rowling's um, unique view, you know, points of view there. Um, not that we're saying you can't have differing points of view, but many people have sort of said that uh, the points of view go to the point where... Um now, understand they do try to take a very, oh, we're not really choosing sides here. However, Tanner will have a point in a moment about... Um his stance uh, in a minute, but, and it is true, yeah, you can have different points of view, but, uh, J.K. Rowling is pretty, uh, like, hateful toward trans people, not just, like, um, like a different point of view, but vehemently hateful. It is not something that they would like to necessarily support, uh, and I absolutely understand that notion there. Now, as such, I'm also the type who believes that you know, separating the author from the actual work is important. I like to look at games. I believe it is essential. Regardless, uh, this is a huge game that's coming out, so personally, I do want to see it. However, recognizing what is going on with that, uh, I have personally decided that uh, any of my money that has been, uh, you know, raised through ad revenue, as well as uh, the Hellfire Comms Patreon uh, over the course of this game, I've decided to actually donate it to the Trevor Project. Mm -hmm. uh, so the Trevor Project is an American non-profit organization uh, focusing on suicide prevention. Uh, Tanner is Canadian, by the way, and Tom is British. Where and by that I mean like they both live there as well. Uh, Tom lives in England and uh, Tanner lives in Canada. Among uh, lesbian, gay, bisexual, trans, queer, and questioning youth there. So I thought this way I'm able to experience the game. Again, it's something that uh, I'm personally interested in seeing just from a general game development standpoint, while still uh, doing some good in the world and you know pushing back on some uh, ideas and opinions that I'm personally against of the original author. So that's just kind of where I'm at with this. We're pretty much, we're not going to be bringing up as much negativity because we're kind of here for a good time. But of course, we do have to address this from the get-go. Yeah, it would kind of feel a bit fake, a bit hollow if we did. Personally, I'm kind of ambivalent to the whole thing. Like, I recognize some of J.K. Rowling's views are extreme, uh, to say the least. But I'm here to just play a video game. That is my job. That is what I like to do as a hobby and as, you know, what I do for a living. So if you're disappointed, it's just how it is. So let's go ahead and get started with Hogwarts Legacy. Yeah. So that was essentially their original statement about the game in general and more so the controversy surrounding the game. And you might have noticed even the, uh, the way that Tom phrased his point at the end there where he said he's kind of, you know, ambivalent, he doesn't really care. You might, you know, look at that and say, oh, well, that's pretty fucked up. First of all, again, that's the whole point. That's how normies, because these guys are absolutely normies, more left-leaning than uh, I, would, I would think than uh, West Side Live. But they are still normies. 
And then they made a statement. A statement regarding Hogwarts legacy. Hey all, and Tom here. A close friend of mine reached out to me about recent comments I've made, Ari, the boycott of Hogwarts Legacy, and asked me to clarify my opinions. I believe this is a request being made in good faith, so I have no problems fulfilling it. I have no ill will toward the trans community. Never have, never will. I will not name names as they aren't trophies to be shown off, but I have supported and will continue to support my trans friends now and in the future. While I maintain that boycotts and attempted manipulation towards people, especially those who aren't privy to any of J.K. Rowling's views and simply wish to play a video game based on a franchise they enjoy, is ill-advised as it gives those with bad intentions free reign to be assholes online, 100% agree with this, I fully understand why this anger is prevalent in the first place. As mentioned before, we will be supporting the Trevor Project throughout the Hogwarts Legacy playthrough, and I will be removing any recent comments I any recent comment I've made during the boycott. Uh, going forward, I think he means on Twitter with that, by the way. Going forward, I will focus on my work with the playthrough and leave the culture war bollocks uh, in the bin where it belongs. Lastly, we will be maintaining a hard stance on banning any and all transphobic comments during said playthrough on our channel. If those who disapprove of us playing the game wish to express themselves and have done so in a civil manner, they are in the right to do so. We will not tolerate harassment toward any side in this matter. It is a video. It is a video game I've been looking forward to for years, and that is now it's being and that is and that is how it's being treated. Nothing more and nothing less. I apologize if I've upset any of our fans, trans or otherwise, and I hope I can regain your respect sometime in the future. If not, there's no hard feelings. Thank you for reading. And he, he didn't set an end, Tom. I thought he was going to. Now, I had a response to this. Hey, all. Thanks, Tom. Love you too, man. <laughs> uh, where I said, based end, Tom, with a common W. Been watching your playthrough since you started, at, uh, since you started and HFC is literally what got me into YouTube. I've seen you grow so much as a channel and as people. I was so impressed with how you discussed such progressive and anti-fascist concepts in the Detroit Become Human playthrough. Fantastic playthrough, by the way. Highly recommend it. You're a good dude from everything I've seen, and as I've become more progressive myself, I'm prouder than ever to call this my favorite YouTube channel. You're growing, learning, and adapting to the world like the rest of us. I agree wholeheartedly with your statement, and as someone who actually follows and discusses political and social issues myself, you're much more level-headed and on the right side of history than many others. You enjoy the game for what it is, and I'll be following along for the ride. We're all here for fun and informative commentary on video games and other media, which you and the rest of HFC excel at. Keep it up. You're doing great work. Uh, and I, I hold to that, by the way. I've been watching their playthrough. It's good shit. And speaking of their playthrough, there's a character that people have been, especially people like Jesse Gender, have been super uh, hateful toward as well in saying that, oh, there's a character called Sir Rona. And, they, and they're a trans character, and they think, oh, the fact that they're called Sir, and their last name is Ryan, that that is a kind of dig at trans people um, in that note to call it Sir, and, you know, call them Sir, it as in the name, to have them be named Sir, and have Ryan be the last name, a generally masculine name. Although there are women with the name Ryan, too. In any case, they discuss this pretty well as well. in uh, part three of the playthrough. Now, what can I... Oh, there's a face I haven't seen before. <laughs> it's... Oh, you know what? Here. I'm gonna have to... not have it sped up so we can actually hear the dialogue for the trans person in a minute. Just don't forget the butter. Now, what can I... Oh, there's a face I haven't seen before. As I understand it, by the way, the person who's playing the trans woman in this game actually is trans herself. It'll, they actually have a trans woman playing the trans character. It's my first time here. Welcome. Okay, so. Butterbeer's on me. Trans character named Sirona Ryan. About the oh! I shall be looking in on the other shopkeepers. Oh, wait, no. Shop. Oh, I heard a bit about this. <laughs> right. I'm just going to address this right now. Sirona is a. Well 
I believe, a goddess of healing springs, which makes perfect sense for a... What would the term be? Bar mistress? Bar master? Something's not right. Uh, I know in Japan they would call them... Actually, I don't know. But I know what you're saying. I know what you're saying. Kind of like a, the, the feminine equivalent of a Dionysus or something. Was that Lodgok I saw leaving just now? Your client. Theophilus, a well-earned butterbeer. You don't want to see what's under his hat. I also have a hat. It's busy. There been any blood? I don't. Yeah, forever. To this. Seems you've made an unfortunate enemy. Anyway, getting back to this. People made a bit of a stink about the first trans character in Harry Potter having the name Sir Oda. First of all, yes, I know there are different interpretations and spellings of this that they probably could have gone with, but I'm going to have to say I find this a bit of a stretch. And Ryan, yeah, that is a masculine surname, but it's also just a regular surname. Also, I really, really, really doubt J.K. Rowling had anything to do with this naming choice. If anything, it might be a bad coincidence from the devs, but she contributed, I'm sure, very little to this. No. Yeah, she just got royalties because it's her IP. Oh, if Sirona turns out to be a bad character, hey, by all means have at it. But right now, I will remain on that fence. <laughs> you can't remove me from it. I've glued myself to it. <laughs> I mean, it's important to be, you know, pragmatic about it. To actually look at, at all the evidence and not just make a judgment right away. That's one of the reasons why, again, I wanted to see this game. To really see everything about it. Also, oh, that is beautiful. Barkeep. That was the word I was looking for. Yeah, but there is a special term for a feminine master of the bar. That I will look up right now because it's killing me. Okay, so yeah, that's their discussion on the matter. And yeah, at the end of the day, of course, 100%, I agree with all those guys. I wanted to show those different perspectives from a more normie kind of standpoint as far as how are people in general viewing this. And why the fuck did we drop the ball? Like, not I didn't. But um, people on the left, as it, like in general, why did our, our, our movement, as it were, our, our whatever you call it, why? Because there are so many people who want to treat this, uh, this political movement and the idea of progressivism and all this stuff like it's a social club. Uh, there was a, a person who went on and uh, debated Vosh about this and basically said that, well it makes her feel uncomfortable like she can't trust you and, and 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 was just talking about all this stuff where it really is just it's purity testing and again my stance with all of this if you for whatever reason do not want to uh partake in a product for whatever reason because you don't agree with how it's produced you don't agree with who it's produced by whatever the case more power to you but you do not hold other people to that standard and vilify them because they either don't care or they are unaware, which most people, of course, are unaware of these kind of things. So you just... And if you are more progressive and you do know about these things, for the love of fuck, do not be pushing other people away from your movement and from the idea of progressivism and leftism and all that stuff because you are like just gonna whine about this shit like this is the kind of shit this is the the culture war shit <clears throat> excuse me the culture war shit that conservatives love you know i've talked about this before when cringy shit happens and conservatives ask cringe we should point that out and be like yo they're being fucking idiots right but when we act like idiots we need to hold other people in our movement as it were whatever you want to call it accountable as well because if we don't we seed ground to conservatives to run with this shit to the for the right to run with this shit and be like oh look at these idiots and this is the kind of stuff that zen was correct in talking about where he talked about we're entering another like anti-sjw gamergate 2 era we yeah we absolutely are so just be kind and respectful of people in general um understand where they're coming from both people that don't get it and aren't that, you know, into this stuff understand where the people that do want to boycott, you know, products like this 
understand where they're coming from, and at the same time, understand and be respectful uh, on the other side. Be respectful and understanding of the people who aren't as familiar or aware or, again, even care about all of this stuff, you know? Just understand those different perspectives, and yes, be willing to uh, educate and help people understand your perspective. That's fine, but just don't be an don't don't be an asshole about it. You know what I mean? Just don't be an idiot. Don't be a dick. Don't be what so many people often are in these situations. We can agree that it's super fucking dumb and cringe when the right wants to cancel uh, Nike because uh, Colin Kaepernick took a knee during the national anthem to protest uh, police brutality, or that um, the Daily Wire is now making their own anti-Hershey's chocolate because Hershey's had an ad that featured, not even prominently featured, she was in the back of a, of a group, but featured a trans woman and shit like that. Like, if we can agree that that's cringe and make fun of them for this shit... We should be able to understand that it's just as cringe when we do this kind of shit, and we can't do it. We just, we cannot do it. It makes us, it makes the, the movement, it makes people in general, and the concept of being progressive bad. You know, there's a reason that the term SJW has had such a negative uh, connotation to it for a lot of people. I've been of that world myself. You know, I was never like, full, you know, alt-right or anything like that, but I was, I, you know, I was, I was definitely uh, anti-SJW for a time, and it's things like this that push people into those directions, and the right is right there to take them into their arms and say, oh, those big meanies on the left, yeah, aren't they so mean? Yeah. So, as always, these are just my thoughts. Please, let me know what yours are in the comments down below. Follow me on social media for more. Links in the description. Be kind to each other in the comments. I know this is a touchy issue, so please, be kind. Take care of each other out there. Peace and love.